Amazon Q Developer is available in all JetBrains IDEs, including IntelliJ, WebStorm, and PyCharm. Hi, my name is Wojtek, and if you are a fan and also a user of JetBrains IDEs like myself, you might be wondering how I can leverage the full power of Amazon Q Developer from now on. Well, stay tuned because in this video, I will show you how to install, configure, and use Amazon Q Developer on your day-to-day -day tasks together with your favorite JetBrains IDE. As you can see, we have landed in our favorite IDE. In my case, this is a community version of IntelliJ IDEA, but feel free to choose your favorite IDE because you don't have to limit yourself just to that IDE. At this moment, Amazon Q Developer extensions are supported in all IDEs available in JetBrains family, and that includes such IDEs like WebStorm, PyCharm, IntelliJ Ultimate, and even Rust Rover. So you can choose your favorite one. And as you can also see, we have a project loaded into our IDE. This is a very simple Java-based application that exposes a CRUD-based API. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. And this API is built with the help of Spring Boot Framework. I'm additionally using Maven as a build tool here, and the whole project is developed with Java 1.8. This information is pretty important from the perspective of one of the features I would like to later show you, which is Amazon Q Developer Code Transformation feature. This allows you to transform your project from Java 1.8 and Java 11 to a modern version of JDK, which will be Java 17 at this point. And throughout that modernization, it will update your dependencies, detect not so modern code patterns and update them you can also modernize the whole experience with just a few clicks and help of AI-based tools. So now it's time to have a look what kind of extensions we need to install to fully integrate with Amazon Q Developer Offering. And this will be one of the first things that you will see as a different one if you already use some of those extensions previously. So if you will go to the plugins at the moment, it will require you to install three different extensions, all from IWS organization that is available on the official JetBrains Marketplace page. Before that separation, AWS Toolkit contained Amazon Q and Amazon Code Whisperer in one single extension. But we have separated that to a standalone extension, and now Amazon Q, that's how the extension is called, will be available in the JetBrains Marketplace to install to provide you support for Amazon Q Developer including Amazon Code Whisperer, which is powering Amazon Q Developer underneath. If you are wondering what is AWS Core in this case, this is a third extension that was separated from both AWS Toolkit and Amazon Q to extract the authentication via AWS Builder ID and also AWS Identity Center single sign-on. So this is a shared space for both extensions and will be included as a dependency. Last but not least, you have made me wondering what happened with Amazon Code Whisperer brand after this release. Well, it powers Amazon Q Developer underneath. So we have introduced two different pricing plans. One is called Amazon Q Business and one is called Amazon Q Developer. And both are bundling similar sets of features. Q Business bundles all the business capabilities, including collecting your data sources from your organizations using Amazon QuickSight, for graphing that data and providing stats and visualizations, and also integrating with Amazon Connect and future also with AWS supply chain. In terms of integration for development side, Amazon Q Developer bundles the whole developer experience, including all features that were available for Code Whisperer individual and professional plans in a single place. So let's go back to the IDE and see how we can actually deal with the authentication and use Amazon Q developer in practice now. So let's have a look how we can use Amazon Q developer in practice. And in order to do this, we need to authenticate properly. Before the separation, you may remember that all the credentials, including AWS CLI profiles and access keys that were deployed in your local machine, were available in AWS Toolkit, and they are still there. You can use all of the available profiles to list all the resources, as you can see uh, currently in the IDE. 
That being said, AWS Toolkit is now separate from that. So in order to properly authenticate and leverage Q Developer, we need to go to the right-hand side when the, we have a separate Amazon Q page. And now we have two different options to authenticate. One is using AWS Builder ID when no AWS account is required. And another one is using professional license when you are signing in via AWS single sign-on which is provided via AWS Identity Center built by administrators in your organization. So as a first example, I will use AWS Builder ID. So I will select the first option, use for free, no AWS account required, and I will click continue. It will immediately redirect me to a browser with generating a confirmation code. So I need to check if that confirmation code matches the one that I will see in the browser. So let's move to the browser and the authorization request is available with exactly the same code so I can confirm and continue. And at this point, it will redirect me to a login page for my AWS Builder ID. I already have my Builder ID, so I will choose already have a Builder ID and sign in. It already automatically filled my email address and now I need to provide a password to authenticate properly into that environment. I will need to pass the CAPTCHA and mark this as the trusted device. And after a successful sign-in, it will ask me if I will allow or access to AWS Toolkit for JetBrains to access Cold Whisperer. And I can list out all the permissions that are related with the Cold Whisperer and enabling Amazon Q developer to work with Cold Whisperer. So I'm currently allowing access. And after that, after that request was approved, I can successfully move to the IntelliJ and work with Amazon Q as you can see on the screen. After successful authentication, you have multiple ways to interact with Amazon Q and ask it for help. One way will be to go through the chat tabs, which are available on the sidebar on the right hand side. And every single time when you will open a new tab, you will open a new session that will preserve the context within a given session. Inside that given session, you can either ask questions in a literal way in a fully conversational mode, like for example, how come Amazon Q can help me? And then you can read the responses provided in the chat, or you can actually open a command palette by typing slash and then choose either slash dev, which will allow you to plan and implement a new functionality across multiple fires in your workspace, or slash transform, which will allow you to transfer your Java 8 or 11 applications and port them to Java 17. Uh, bear in mind that at the moment, just those runtimes are supported and only projects that are based in Maven are supported. But I will show you in a moment how does it work. Outside of the common palette and chat, you also have Amazon Q available on the status bar. When you can have pausing auto suggestion, you can open cold reference logs, you can open the chat panels, send feedback, and also open settings for Amazon Q as well. Bear in mind that send feedback feature here for Amazon Q will send directly feedback to the new standalone extension. If you would like to send feedback to our AWS Toolkit, which is now separate, you will need to go to the regular place when you can find AWS Toolkit and then use Send Feedback for Toolkit feature here. So let's close AWS Toolkit and let's have a look how we can actually work with Amazon Q. So one way of integrating with Amazon Q and using it in the daily work is actually sending particular code samples to Q with ask or for help, for example, with explaining that code or optimizing. I have one particular code in mind that is available in the CRUD controller class, which could be a little bit better. So I'm interested how Q can help me with optimizing a get product image method. So I will select that particular method and then I will send it to Amazon Q to optimize the code. Outside of the optimization, you can also ask it to refactor, to fix it, to explain it. So I will use the optimize code part to present the answer. And in the given chat tab that was already open, it asked to optimize a given code 
and provided me an answer. So let's see what kind of optimization it provided. Um, it, uh, it actually correctly identified that I can avoid creating unnecessary objects and then returning that directly from the try block. So essentially, this is a good, interesting advice. I can then select this and copy paste uh, this answer as a result. Or I can also insert it at cursor if I will insert it properly it's on my file. Also, keep in mind that all of those answers have the feedback buttons at the bottom. So if you like or didn't like this particular answer, you can give us the feedback about the quality of your answer. I'm actually quite happy with the provided answer, so I can select this as the positive one. And also it suggested a follow-up questions uh, on this particular bit. So it also suggested that we can ask a follow-up about other optimizations that could be done, how does this will, will improve the performance, and can you explain the code changes as well. Sending code to Amazon Q is one way to interact with the service, but we can also use it to write actual code. And let's use that particular method that I explained a moment ago uh, as an example for writing an actual tests. So let's go to the test definition of our project to do a CRUD controller test. And let's make a place for a particular test that we would like to create. I already crafted a prompt that will be used to create such tests. So this is a comment that explains that we would like to have a test get product image. What we are asserting that includes a status code for HTTP response and also a byte value. We would like to hard code a certain image value and we would like to mock the product as we are mocking it in the other tests available in this class. So let's see how Amazon Q will help us. And immediately after providing a prompt, it detects that we would like to create a test by providing a test annotation for our code. So let's fill this in and let's wait for the prompt for the proposal regarding the test itself. And it suggested pretty much a good implementation of our given test. So it's no red um, information inside the code. It looks correct. Let's check if the test already compiles and provides additional value. Previously, we have six tests in our test suite. So at this point, if we will scroll up after successful build, we should see that seven tests run without any failures. So Amazon Q helped us to, in this case as well. Before I will show you the last two things, I would like to mention also that we have another way of authenticating with Amazon Q Developer, which is using AWS Identity Center and single sign-on. So in order to show that, I would like to close all of those elements that are hanging here. And we will go and sign out from Amazon Q through the status bar. And then we will open the Amazon Q tab, and we'll see again the prompt that will ask us to select the proper authentication method. So if you will select the use professional license, sign in to AWS with single sign on and click continue, the next step, it will ask you about start URL that it's provided by admin or help desk, which means that you are essentially typing here and single sign on start URL that it's used by your AWS Identity Center, and then you are selecting a region that you will be used for that single sign-on. If you are interested in setting up the whole backend infrastructure for AWS Identity Center and also single sign-on, I encourage you to look into the community.aws blog posts when we already have a working example that explains the whole setup that is required, even for the multi-account and AWS organizations. As a last step, I would like to show you two commands that are available in Amazon Q Developer, which is slash dev and slash transform. I will start with the transformation command, which allows you to transform your Java 8 or Java 11 Maven based projects to Java 17. So let's go with transformation here. And it actually checks if our project is suitable for that particular code transformation. And it detected that we have a module that can be transformed to JDK 17. So if I will select confirm, 
it will immediately run the Maven pipeline to package and upload all the changes to the Amazon Q developer code transform service. So it will package everything and then on the secure environment there will do all the transformations, tests on the new runtime, and you will see all the progress that is available inside the transformation hub. So as you can see, the job is starting. Now we have an information that Q is scanning the project files and getting ready to start the job. And it will also require those uploaded artifacts to be available. Once that's available, it will start the job. Estimated time is several minutes. It depends on the big, how big the project is. Uh, and you can also select and, and track all the transformation details inside the chat. Uh, so you will be able to see progress and information about the whole process inside the chat as well. I will pause the video here because now it will take the whole transformation process in the background and we will return to a regular flow after it will reappear with the results. As you can see, after almost 14 minutes, the transformation was completed and the whole process works in a safe sandbox environment. So Amazon Q reviewed your application code, generated a transformation plan. If Q has any changes in your code, it will do the whole changes and tests in the sandbox. It does not interfere with your working repository. And once transformation job is complete, Q is sharing new code, which you can review before accepting. So we'll do this exactly right now. You can view the diff and view the transformation summary as these pop-up suggest. Let's go with the transformation summary first. So it will uh, download a file, a Mandel file that it's uh, listing all the changes. I would like to close the chat here because uh, it's not active anyway, because that particular chat is disabled through the transformation command. So I will close it and I will make some more place for the transformation summary. And transformation summary is a markdown file that collects all the information about the transformation job. That includes a list of the changed files. That also includes a list of the dependencies that were changed, either added, deleted, or updated, and overall status for the whole job, transformation job. So let's now review the diff that is provided to this transformation job. And as you can see, you have a list of files that were modified throughout the whole process. Let's review the first one, which is CRUD controller Java. It correctly identified that we are using the old school approach for base64 decoder. That class is already marked as deprecated in Java 8. And it correctly moved to something more modern, which is Java util base64. Um, so we will review all the changes and we'll apply only those which were necessary for us. So if we will go to the next file, we will see that it actually incorrectly identified this particular thing uh, and replace get one to get the reference by ID. We will skip that change when we will apply it. And in the next step, it migrated JUnit to Jupyter and replaced all the stuff that was inside those tests that we created uh, with Amazon Q and also earlier for the whole project. So let's apply those changes as we requested by removing the product service change. You also see that it added summary and also build command output log. If we would like to dive deeper into the whole tra code transformation um, results, we can also have those details within the build command output log. And obviously it also updated POM XML file, but I will review it in a moment. So allow me to uncheck those markdown and log files. And let's apply this patch to our code. Let's close this part and let's review the POM file. So in the POM file, it correctly identified the properties for Java version and suggestions for source target and release when it comes to the JDK version. It also updated all the dependencies correctly. And last but not least, we need to download those dependencies that were not available for us. So we need to make sure that everything is ready to build. Last but not least for this particular part, as in the other cases when we interact with AI-powered assistant, you can provide your own feedback 
So in this particular case, I say that I am moderately happy with this and I can share that feedback with my uh, team and provide a little bit more information inside the optional field uh, about how was our experience with upgrading our Java application. So I can share that feedback and close the rest of the uh, windows because we have one more feature that I would like to show you, which is uh, slash dev, aka plan and implement a feature across multiple files in the workspace. So in order to leverage the slash dev feature, you need to open a new tab inside Amazon Q and then type slash dev. And then in the following part of this command, you are briefly describing a task or an issue that you would like to address here. And I already prepared a prompt that says, create an HTTP endpoint that allows for deleting a single customer by its ID and provide necessary changes in controller, service, and repository layers. And as you can see in our project, we will have controller repository and service layers. And some of those um, crowd-based APIs are already implemented, mostly creation and listing customers' orders and products. But at the same time, we are missing other crowd-based APIs. One of them is deletion for customers. So let's see how Amazon Q can help us with developing that particular feature. Let's send that command to Amazon Q, and then it will create the plan for the whole development job. This may take a few minutes, so we will reappear here after it will provide some results. So as we can see, after a few minutes, it correctly prepared a plan, which by the way, looks pretty much correct. So first things first, it identified that in customer service, there is no method delete customer, so we need to add it. And it provided a signature that will be done. Uh, it also provides an implementation that it will call delete by ID from repository and la add a logger call for to log the deletion. Then identified that it needs to modify the customer repository, but a plot twist, there is already delete by ID present there uh, because of the implementation, so there is no need for changes. In the third step, it actually created a test uh, that will mock the customer ID as an input, mock also the delete by ID call, and then the whole test delete customer should assert that status should be okay. And last but not least, it also correctly identified that a CRUD controller needs a delete mapping for customers that is already having a path variable. So it adds this proper annotation and also path variables as well. It also adds validations and check if a customer exists before the deleting and adds a custom exception if for not found case. And no new imports are needed. That's at least what it was identified throughout the whole thing. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with the result, so I will mark it as a, as a good one uh, and provide the feedback. You should also remember about this. And now it asks me, would, you, would I would like to generate a suggestion for this? I will be able to review uh, differences and file diff after the generation. So yeah, please do it. And let's wait for the results. Um, after it will generate the code, we will return back. So again, after a few minutes, it generated the old changes that it was mentioned. So we can review each, each change and each file line by line. So let's start with customer service Java. And let's see what were added. Essentially, it adds the method that was called delete customer. Let me resize this window to show it a little bit more. So essentially, delete customer was added to the uh, customer service.java. That looks correct. That is a good change. Let's go with the crowd controller. In CRUD controller, we see the lit mapping that was added. So essentially, it also provided information about the lit customer and logged some cases if there is an exception and if customer does not exist. Um, so that also looks pretty much correct. And as a last step, we can investigate the change in tests that was generated. So essentially, it introduced another test at the bottom of the file that handles the delete customer case. So it uses the Mokito correctly and also verifies that the 
uh, status code is actually okay. So this is also a pretty good change. So now we can actually accept the whole code by inserting it. But before that, I will also mark this change as the good one, providing the feedback for the Amazon Q. So let's insert this code. And then after that, we can close all the diffs and we can check if our application is working uh, or move to another task with Amazon Q um, on top of the another session in the chat as it currently suggests. Final call to action, I would like to encourage you to provide the feedback to the authors of the extension. So if you will go to the Amazon Q in the status bar, you can also send feedback with the same dialogue that you've already seen. You can say, are, are you happy? Are you not happy about the experience? What can be improved? And you can provide a little bit more details in the, in the available text field. Keep in mind that Amazon Q now is a standalone extension and it's separate from AWS Toolkit. So if you would like to provide either feedback for AWS Toolkit or to Amazon Q, you should use a different path for that. And if you have enjoyed this video, leave a like under it, subscribe to AWS Developers YouTube channel. And if you are looking for more technical content, visit community.aws when we are publishing technical blog posts on various topics related with building on AWS. And that's all for today. Thank you and see you next time.